today's webinar is going to discuss how to go beyond VM provisioning with IT process automation. Uh, I am Guy Nadivi, Director of Business Development for IAHU, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Yaron Levy, IAHU's Vice President of Professional Services. And together, we're going to not only talk about why you should go beyond VM provisioning with IT process automation, but we're also going to show you a really cool live demo of how automation can be applied to onboarding new employees. This is a very common process for most organizations, and we've recently learned that in many of those organizations, it can take up to a week to complete. Uh, but with uh, automation, we can demonstrate how it can be done uh, in seconds. Since we're going to be talking about VM provisioning, I think it's imp uh, appropriate to state up front that VMware has a tool to automate various tasks like VM provisioning within vCloud Suite and vSphere. And that tool, as you may already be aware, is called vRealize Orchestrator, formerly known as vCenter Orchestrator, or just vCO. And if you're really technically savvy, you can use it to do a number of things within the VMware ecosystem. Now, at the beginning of September, we exhibited at VMworld 2015 in San Francisco, and while we were there, people visiting our booth came up and very unexpectedly told us about a number of problematic issues they have with VMware's orchestrator, including it's not PowerShell friendly. Uh, apparently, people are having many problems running PowerShell scripts. Some people said it was clunky. In other words, whatever it is that you want to automate, there's going to be a whole lot of assembly required. And it requires a lot of JavaScript, which of course begs the question, if you need to do lots of JavaScript coding, how much of this can really be called automation? And the, the bottom line is that quite a few people felt their attempts to automate VMware needed to be easier, but still robust enough to handle complicated processes. And they wanted to be able to do it quickly too. So now we know there are lots of organizations who want to automate large portions of their VMware environment. And we're talking about things like um, virtual machine provisioning. Uh, everybody probably knows that automating this makes a lot of sense, and it's probably the single biggest use case for VMware automation. Uh, resource adjustment is another big use case because responding to user requests for increasing resources such as memory and storage space, as well as resource reallocation between busy and idle servers is another strong justification for automation in the VMware world. VMware world. Um, VM maintenance. Uh, let's not forget that once you've spun up your virtual machines, you've still got to perform routine maintenance on them, such as disk cleanup, service restarts, etc. And automating that removes a major headache for IT staff. Uh, VMware snapshots. At some point, you'll likely want to create and delete snapshots, usually from a long list, and doing this manually can be very painful, so automation is a big boon to that. And finally, uh, how about using automation to spin up an entire off-site data center full of VMs in the event of a disaster? So that might be actually the most business critical of all the use cases for automation is uh, for your disaster recovery plan. And by the way, on that last point, there are numerous regulations surrounding business continuity requirements for various which is another key reason why disaster recovery procedures that include virtual machines should be automated. Uh, finance, healthcare, utilities, and government organizations in particular seem to have the most stringent requirements for business continuity in the event of a disaster. Now, according to a Gardner analyst that we spoke with at VMworld, here's the profile of the organizations most interested in automating their VMware environments. They are at least 50% virtualized, and in particular, they're using a lot of virtualized databases, and they typically have more than 100 vSphere licenses, oftentimes a lot more than 100. And the Gardner analyst that we spoke with told us that organizations with these um, characteristics stand to benefit the most from adding automation to their VMware infrastructure. Okay, let's go back to VMworld 2015. With all the many processes that VM admins could apply automation to, there was one process in particular we kept hearing about over and over that IT departments wanted to automate more than any other, and that was new employee onboarding. So at many organizations, new employee onboarding has become a very onerous cross-platform. It involves things like submitting equipment records, creating an active directory, granting IP, Salesforce.com, the HR, etc. And of course, 
a VM. And many organizations now have very lengthy checklists onboarding. And we were told by a few organizations that it takes them up to a week to complete the tasks usually uh, involved in onboarding, and usually they're done entirely manually. So with that in mind, what we want to show you today is how easy it is to go beyond VM provisioning and many other provisioning tasks with IT pro pro process automation using self-service. Even if you're already using some kind of automation tool to orchestrate your VM infrastructure, I think you'll appreciate the ability to orchestrate that and many other things from a single pane of glass. And um, Noy, why don't you go ahead and make uh, your own the presenter, and he will take it away from here with a live demo. Thank you, Guy. Guy, can you confirm you're seeing my desktop, please? Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is, uh, again, Yaron Levy, and I'm managing the professional services here in Yale. And I'm uh, going to demonstrate to you guys with uh, two main workflows um, uh, that we have for today. One is uh, focused on uh, VM provisioning, so you will see some of the capabilities of our product around that. And then the other one is more focused on onboarding, on creating um, Active Directory accounts, and so on. But uh, before that, let's start with some overview about uh, what is our product, what is the IT process automation, what are the main you know features uh, that you can find within this product, and then we're going to dive in just to give you you know um, kind of a glitch of how things uh, looks over here. Um, so the product name is called iShare. iShare is an IT process automation uh, platform which uh, enables you guys to basically design and build different type of processes that you would like to automate inside your IT department. Um, you can think of it as a, um, the orchestrator of the orchestrators. It's capable of integrating with other orchestrators if needed to. Um, it's capable of uh, integrating with monitoring systems. One of the ways that you can trigger processes over here that we're going to talk in, in a couple of seconds is by intercepting alerts from monitoring system. So integration which, uh, with systems like uh, SolarWinds and the Microsoft MOM and the HPOM uh, and so on. And by that, kick workflows that can help you guys to troubleshoot, remediate, communicate with people. And from the other hand, integration with uh, ticketing system, ITSM solutions, help desk systems that can um, help you guys to um, automate the ticketing opening as well as part of uh, the procedure. Um, so uh, that's in, 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 in the very um, highlight of, you know, one of the most important capabilities of the product. Focusing on the tool itself, um, what you're seeing right now is um, a designer uh, that comes with this product that you can use uh, in order to design and build a different type of uh, workflows or processes. Um, it's all a drag and drop interface. Um, as you can see here, these are activities um, or actions, as uh, we call it, that you can um, drag and drop from the dual box that comes on the left side and basically place them in the order um, of the way that you would like them to uh, be executed uh, when you would like those workflows to run. Now, keep in mind, uh, you're building a workflow to help you to remediate something, that workflow will be triggered for some event coming from outside. That event can be um, an alert from a monitoring system, it can be a ticket from a ticketing system. So for any one of you that's using ServiceNow, um, BMC Remedy and so on, we can also intercept tickets from there and um, run workflows to help you to do all kinds of uh, remediation or provisioning um, um, stuff. Um, talking about uh, talking um, for a couple of seconds about the toolbox. The toolbox um, comes today with 500 different type of actions that you can just need to drag and drop and design your own process. There's no coding. There's no scripting that requires over here. Uh, most of the things are already ready uh, for you guys. Uh, you can see all this bunch of um, categories uh, that come within product from things that you can do with Active Directory and common workflows are going to be in the onboarding process, the password reset um, workflows, termination of users, uh, giving permissions to users, um, and so on. Um, communication, if part of your process requires some approval, then you can communicate with people, send them email, text message, even phone calls, and get the approval before uh, the automation will do um, anything for you. Um, if you do want to uh, embed some uh, scripts of your own, then the PowerShell and the .NET are available for you guys. Just drag and drop 
those actions and design the workflow that you would like to uh, execute, uh, dealing with files and folders and so on. And I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, waste your time on talking about uh, this entire toolbox, but there's a lot of actions that you will find very useful uh, without the need to you know, develop anything um, in order to make them run. So um, that's in high level about the tool. Now let's focus about two processes uh, that I've created over here uh, for this uh, demonstration. And we're gonna start with um, VM provisioning. This is a very uh, simple workflow just to illustrate um, the basic concept of um, creating a, a virtual machine, uh, provisioning a virtual machine. Uh, those actions, again, that you're seeing right here were dragged from the toolbox. You can find in our toolbox all the VMware categories um, over here. So we have actions that deal with guests, with hosts, snapshots, and templates. Um, under the guests, you will find everything from creating a new virtual machine, from cloning virtual machines, from power on, power off, Whatever you need to do uh, with your virtual machines in order to provision a new one, you will find everything over here. Again, there's also actions about you know, dealing with snapshots in case you wanna build workflows to um, help you um, remediate um, or you know, create snapshots and delete old snapshots. That's a very common uh, workflow that we're seeing. Um, focusing on this one, it's a very basic workflow that basically gets information from outside uh, through um, our self-service, and I'm gonna show you uh, our self-service um, in a couple of seconds. Um, we drag this action at the beginning. We are using variables. Those variables are being filled in real time when the user uh, requests to provision such virtual machine. And basically what it does, it's actually, you know, send a request to the vCenter to start and creating that virtual machines. It's gonna wait a couple of seconds to make that process start. It's gonna check that the VM exists and is gonna reply back to the self-service um, that this process, uh, this server is ready. Now keep in mind that there are a couple of ways again to um, kick a workflow over here. One of the ways that comes within our product is uh, what we call the self-service, which is basically is a portal uh, that you can install together with our product. And um, using this portal, users can log in with their credentials. It can be um, an Active Directory credentials, or an iShare credentials, inside user will be able to see um, workflows that you guys are gonna enable him to see. Uh, so it's all based on permissions. You can set up that, hey, your one can uh, do only VMware provisioning, but uh, John can do anything that is uh, around onboarding because he's part of the HR. Uh, and it's all be, gonna be available um, over here. Those uh, self-service pages are also um, you can also design them just by drag and drop. You don't need to be an HTML coder or any developer to design those pages. Within our product, you will find that we have um, a self-service section over here that can allow you guys to design also by drag and drop the form that you would like to expose um, your end user. Uh, once that's done, uh, you're gonna connect it to a workflow that will need to be executed uh, behind the scene when someone's gonna uh, send that request, and then you can set up permission, who is allowed to do what, uh, and so on. So very simple, drag and drop, no need to code anything. In a couple of minutes, you can actually have something ready. Now this is a very basic VM provisioning, obviously. Uh, we're just asking the user to uh, provide us with the name um, of the VM, you know, how many CPUs, this space, memory, and that's it. Uh, so that's a basic one. Obviously, in your um, environment, you will make it much more complex but you have all the tools and all the flexibility to do it uh, within our product. So let's uh, show you um, how this one uh, works. I'm gonna go to the VM category. I'm gonna call this self-service. Again, that's the web page I've designed just by drag and drop. Uh, didn't take me more than 10 minutes uh, uh, to have it ready. I have also on the side, I have my vCenter over here. So we're gonna see the server being created um, over here, just to show you, you know, everyone that it's really working. So we're gonna put that on the side for a second. And let's give it a name. Guy, I'm gonna do your machine, okay? So we want Guy machine, we want a 40 um, gigabyte disk space, two gigabyte memory. We're gonna submit that. Behind the scene, 
this is where I share right now, get this request and running the workflow, executing the workflow. We can actually go behind the scene and look at the tool. The active logs over here can uh, give you um, um, the logs of everything that is being running uh, behind the scene when um, an alert is coming in or a self-service request uh, is um, being sent to, the, to iShare. And you can see that right now it's in a phase of sending the request to um, the vCenter uh, in order to uh, create uh, that virtual machine. So we're going to wait a couple of seconds. In the meantime, we can also wait to get it over here. And here it is. You can see the VM is now completed and was um, generated uh, within our vCenter. Very simple. Now this is a, a, obviously a very basic um, workflow that you guys can use, but you can make it much more complex. And I'll give you some examples. First of all, uh, the VM create is a basic action that only you know gets the disk space, the memory size, uh, but that's it. But um, in some cases, you want you may want um, to have it with much more configuration. And for that cases, uh, we provide an action called the VM configuration spec. <clears throat> Sorry, which basically enables you to um, add all this stuff when this spec needs to be uh, generated. So from the registration of the windows, the license that needs to be placed in, what's going to be the administrator, the local administrator uh, password, if there is any command that you need to run uh, you know, um, in advance on the first time it comes up, the network. And obviously, you can either use um, hard-coded information like IP addresses if you need to set something, but you can also use variables. And those variables can be also um, being taken from uh, the user itself through the self-service. Um, if you need to, adding the domain, the OS, um, uh, security ID, and once you create that spec, you will be able to use the VM clone in order to clone one of the other virtual machines. That configuration setup on that uh, virtual machine. I'm going to remove that for a second. Once your VM um, has been created, obviously the next step will be to power on the VM. So you can find the action over here, which you're gonna can place uh, over here. You can give the name of that VM that uh, you just uh, created, again with variables, and this action will turn on the VM. You can at the end decide that you would like to send an email um, to the admin or to the user that generated um, this uh, VM and basically send him uh, the information about, hey, um, and. So the user request is over here. And then whatever uh, information you want to put in the subject or in the body of the message, uh, creating that virtual machine for you, you can go ahead and um, connect to that uh, server. Um, obviously, if you need to involve some um, automation around installing some softwares on that remote VM, that can be done um, as well. Uh, we have a couple of actions over here that you can use and then uh, request that remote server to install whatever uh, is needed. Uh, keep in mind that iShare is an agentless solution, so there are no agents being installed on any of your servers, on any of your VM. Uh, it's enough that you have uh, one server holding iShare, and if you need more for scalability and high availability, you can do that as well. But eventually, all the communication with all the Windows and Unix and Linux servers are done to standard protocols, uh, WMI, WinRAM, uh, Secure Shell, whatever. This is the way uh, we communicate, so we, the footprint is very uh, is very low. So basically, that's about it uh, from provisioning virtual machines. Let's focus for a second about the onboarding process. Okay, so this is the workflow I have for onboarding process. It's also a workflow that um, is being uh, triggered from the self-service. Um, by the way, the uh, um, some of you that um, are using the are using ITSM solutions such as ServiceNow or the BMC Remedy and so on, don't have to use our self service. You can actually use those uh, system self service if you need to. So you can basically uh, design your own form within ServiceNow uh, for both the onboarding, the provisioning, or whatever workflow you guys are gonna 
uh, one in the future. And uh, once you're done, uh, you can set up Aisha to intercept new tickets or update of tickets from those uh, systems and then um, extract information in real time, such as the username, the VM server, the CPU, whatever, and kick the workflow to provisioning um, that machines for you. So this is uh, the option of our self-service and the option of if you have already have an ITSM uh, solution. Okay, so this is the self-service I've created for onboarding. It's a, a basic onboarding process that uh, basically creates the account within Active Directory, and then you can make it as complex as you need to. If you need to create a mailbox, if you need to create some account on your SAP server, if you need to create an account on your PeopleSoft and so on, everything can be done uh, through the workflow. Again, this self-service uh, was designed very quickly inside our tool. I can uh, show you the way it looks like. Here it is, all drag and drop again, doesn't take more than a couple of minutes and you have that self-service um, uh, ready for you. The workflow that's gonna execute is a workflow that's gonna start with, hey, um, you know, let's first check uh, if the information that was provided um, may already exist, maybe the user um, already exists within the Active Directory, you, don't wanna, you do not wanna try to uh, uh, duplicate that. So in that case, you can see that we can, we're using an if-else branches uh, based on the result of such action. Again, the AD user exists is an action that was dragged from the toolbox on the left side. It's an action that actually interacts with my Active Directory, takes the username um, from the information that I'm gonna provide within the cell service, gonna communicate to the Active Directory and check if the user exists. False or, or, or true is gonna go this way. False, that means the user doesn't exist go ahead, generate a password, and go ahead and create an account. Through the user is exist. In my demonstration, I'm just, you know, uh, renaming uh, the username uh, and adding some number after it just to uh, uh, be able to create that uh, user and go back again to recheck if that user that I've assigned it really exists or not. Basically, uh, the software is going to generate the password for the user. So this is the action that you can use in order to create um, passwords. Uh, you can set up the length of the password, uh, whether you want to involve uppercase, lowercase, or both of them, include numbers. So you can make it as complex um, as you wish. Once that's ready, this is the action that's going to interact with the Active Directory. You can see all the percentage over here, are all variables of information that we're going to get uh, from the self-service. I'm going to update the title as part of the procedure and the phone number of this person. So those are another interaction we're doing with the Active Directory with that account that we've just generated and uploading that um, information. And there's no limit of how many updates you can send to your Active Directory. Um, we're also gonna choose to uh, which group uh, this user is gonna be belong to and we're gonna actually assign that user uh, to the group. At the end, just to show you uh, one of our integration with ServiceNow. Uh, so I'm gonna actually create a change request within ServiceNow that documents uh, this request and the user that was generated. So the other uh, screens that I have over here is first my ServiceNow instance, which we're gonna see a ticket being generated over here. And again, it doesn't really matter if it's a ServiceNow, the HP Service Manager, Jira, BMC Remedy, whatever system uh, you guys are using, you will be able uh, 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 to uh, integrate with that. And I have also my Active Directory um, server um, over here. Um, I've created an organization unit specifically for the demonstration, so right now it's empty, but we're going to see the user being created um, over here. One of the uh, capabilities that I'm doing within my self-service is that I'm actually querying uh, the groups that I have uh, in this specific OU, and then in real time when the self-service uh, comes up, just to show you that there is another interaction that you can do inside the cell service if you need to query some information in advance and then give that to the user when he needs to uh, uh, call the cell service. Okay, so let's see how it works. All right, let's start from the beginning. Okay. So the first thing that happened here behind the scene 
you can see all the groups over here. Those were all right now in real time queried from my Active Directory and whatever groups you're going to add there, that's going to be available for you over here. I'm going to create John, John 2, Smith is going to be a manager, that's his title, and his phone number is whatever. And I know that John works in the finance, so I'm going to assign him to the finance group and I'm going to submit this request. Again, what happened behind the scene right now is that I should receive that request, executing an onboarding workflow, which is the workflow that we've seen, checked if the user exists, false, generated the password, created the account, set the title, set the phone number, add that user to the group, send a response to the self-service. I'm going to get that in a couple of seconds and then created an account inside, created a ticket, sorry, inside our ticketing system um, um, service now, as you can see, 30020. So first, let's take a look at the ticket, refresh this one. Create a new user ID for John to Smith, that's the ticket. It's completed, so it's closed already. The information, the username that was created, but any type of information that you would like to populate within that ticket, uh, it's all available uh, uh, for you. Going to my Active Directory, refresh this again. Going to show you that John Smith is now uh, part of my domain inside the phone number that I've provided, his full name, his phone number, and that he is right now a member of uh, the finance uh, group. Very simple. So how can you, um, you know, modify this um, a bit more? So this is a basic one that actually just, you know, just generate an account inside Active Directory. But let's assume that, you know, an account in Active Directory is not enough. You want to have a mailbox for him um, as well. So you can uh, scroll down over here in our toolbox and locate, locate the Microsoft Exchange uh, integration that we have over here. You can select the Exchange New Mailbox. You can place it after the action of adding that uh, person to the group. Inside, you can select your exchange server. You'll need to provide uh, the database name of your server and then just the username that we're creating over here. That's it. This workflow is now ready and the next time it will be executed, it will also go to the exchange server and create that mailbox for him. Now let's assume that you would like to um, also create a user um, inside your um, uh, PeopleSoft or inside your SAP uh, solutions. So that's easy too. You can drag the actions that we have around those two solutions and let's do an SAP account. Again, username is going to be placed over here and that's it. We're going to also create an account inside the SAP for that user. This is a very basic process. Um, you can make it more complex uh, in a way that, let's say that, uh, you know, when the HR use the self-service in order to request, um, to request such, um, you know, user creation, you would like to have some kind of approval cycle uh, before, um, before, you know, creating that uh, workflow, uh, before executing that workflow. So that's very easy. You can uh, use the communications um, action that we have here, um, all of our communication, we're, we're supporting four communication methods basically. It's an email, text messaging, phone call, and instant messaging. And basically you can uh, say that, hey, I, want to, I would like to send an email or a text message to uh, this user manager and ask for his approval before actually go ahead and creating um, the ticket uh, for that person. And if that's the case, then you can, you know, select the send um, email action, place it at the beginning, Provide whatever uh, information, you know, uh, whatever the subject of the, and the body of the message uh, creating. And then I'm going to use the variables again. And basically what we're adding now is a decision tree. Let's do that for now. It's a decision tree that 
will require some approval cycle before actually going ahead and process this entire workflow. And based on the user response, if he's going to say, hey, I approve creating that user. Now, it can be his manager. It can be an IT um, um, manager, whatever, uh, you know, your policy. And then just take the entire workflow, place it under the branch of approval, and that's it. Right now, I've just in seconds modified the workflow to have some um, human intervention and approval cycle before I actually go ahead and process uh, that uh, user. Same, obviously, same goes for the VM. Maybe you don't want everyone to be able to just, you know, request what what type of VM they want. Maybe you want to um, have some um, approval cycle uh, before, and this is the way you can uh, set this up very easily. So basically, that's it about you know onboarding sample and a provisioning uh, sample workflow that you guys can do. Um, I just want to um, add a few things about the way that you can trigger uh, processes over here. So I've already mentioned that you can send alerts from monitoring systems that I sure can intercept and then you know, kick workflows to help you remediate this space problem, website failures, um, and so on. You can um, also intercept tickets from ticketing systems. So if we talked about the self-service and the self-service that comes with the other solutions, so we can intercept uh, those tickets as well, extract the information, and create whatever um, account or, or provisioning whatever virtual machines uh, that is required based on the information that was provided um, inside the ticket. Uh, other ways can be even sending an email. If you enable that feature to iShare, you can also send text messages into iShare if you enable that and also request uh, all types of processes. Let's say you're out of the office, you're an IT guy, and you're out of the office and you forgot to do something, but you have a workflow ready for that. You can just you know, send a text message and trigger that process for you if uh, uh, that's what you want. You can send, uh, send SNMP traps. You can send syslogs uh, to iShare. We have web services that we expose that you can also um, uh, use. So that's uh, a one way based on external um, events coming from outside. Uh, one more option is the schedule action. So basically, the product comes with an internal scheduler um, that you can use, internal Chrome that you can use, and you can um, set up the workflow that you would like to execute and then set it up to run once, to run on a daily basis, every one minute, every 10 minutes on a monthly basis, uh, which basically is very useful for uh, workflows around maintenance. Uh, that you guys uh, uh, may need to do. And so instead of waiting for some external event to trigger that workflow, the internal scheduler is going to um, kick that workflow uh, for you guys. So basically, that's it. In, in, in just to summarize, uh, this tool is very robust. It has a lot of capabilities uh, to help you design almost any type of workflows. Uh, it comes with a very easy to use uh, self service uh, mechanism that can help you to um, create whatever self service. Uh, you want to expose to your end users. Uh, and by the way, one of the common uh, uh, self-services that we're seeing is about password reset. Um, we're getting a lot of requests around that. So uh, users that um, lost their password, users that uh, their password uh, was expired, can basically um, log in as anonymous to the self-service and you know, answering, you know, providing some information about themselves, answering some uh, security questions, and request to reset uh, their password. And obviously, you can either just give them the password or have some approval cycle before uh, doing so. And basically, uh, that's it, Guy. OK, Jerome, thank you very much. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring it back to uh, my screen for a second. And um, OK. All right. So. Um, that was the demo portion of today's webinar, and if you have any questions now, uh, please feel free to ask away. Um, uh, you can submit your questions via chat uh, on the uh, WebEx client. Uh, we've already received a couple of questions. One of them uh, was whether uh, we can provide a self-service method for offboarding somebody, just like we created one for you to do an onboarding. And the answer is yes. Offboarding is basically just onboarding in reverse. It's another workflow of uh, disparate processes that we tie together and provide you with a uh, self-service portal to initiate very simply. So you can onboard and offboard. And then uh, another question that came in that I'm going to go ahead and pass on to your own is, uh, how can you create custom tools for the toolbox? Okay, so there are a couple of um, thanks, guys. So there's a couple of ways uh, that you can uh, uh, that you can do so. Um, one way is uh, that 
you guys already have some PowerShell or .NET scripts that you would like to embed, and for that we have this developer uh, category over here that you can drag and drop. And if it's a PowerShell, just either embed your script inside or um, you know uh, set up uh, the path to the script that you would like to execute. And this is um, a, a very good way to use scripts. Uh, also, the executor action over here can help you to call any existing VB script, batch file, executable, shell script if it's, that's on Linux, and whatever, obviously, whatever the result of those scripts going to be, that's going to be uh, uh, brought back to, into iShare and for further evaluation. So those are the basic ones, but uh, we also uh, can provide you with an SDK that uh, you can use to actually build your own categories and build your own um, activities uh, over here. It's an SDK that is based on, you know, um, half of, you know, creating the form itself, what are the fields, what, you know, the different type of information, labels, and the other half is, hey, what's going to be executed uh, uh, behind the scene when this action uh, is going to be called. Okay. Um, if there are any other questions, go ahead and submit them through the um, uh, chat client. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the, uh, the remainder of the presentation, which is just a few more brief slides. But feel free to continue sending us questions if, uh, if you have any. Um, okay, so um, before we conclude today's webinar, uh, I want to summarize for everybody uh, what we think are the top five reasons that IT process automation goes beyond VM provisioning. Uh, Yaron mentioned some of them, but I just want to highlight and, and, and summarize them for you. Uh, reason number one is that iShare is agentless. That's right, iShare requires no agents. You do not have to install any agent software on any of your devices, be they servers, routers, uh, storage appliances, or anything else. As long as your device can communicate using standard internet protocols, iShare can perform automation on it. And um, okay, I'm gonna pause for a moment because we did have another question come in uh, for your own. Can the send to email address for an account creation approval be filled from a lookup in Active Directory. In other words, look up a user ID in Active Directory and use that username to send the approval email for account creation. Yes, uh, one of the actions that you can find on the Active Directory uh, toolbox is to query your Active Directory where you can either do some search by name or search by username and extract all the information that you want about that user, such as the email address, and get that and use that as a variable within the send email action. And that's it, that's very simple. Okay, so yes, we can do that. Okay, um, the next reason, reason number two uh, why uh, IT process automation goes beyond VM provisioning is the ability to integrate out of the box with many existing software platforms, for example, Active Directory and VMware and a number of other ones that we demonstrated. I've actually got to update this slide because uh, we're adding new integrations all the time and there's a bunch that are not on here like CA Spectrum and Twilio and F5 and CyberArk, and we have a whole bunch of others in the pipeline uh, that we're going to be adding to. So uh, we have very broad integration, and that allows iShare to perform the kind of cross-platform automation uh, that was demonstrated with the onboarding example earlier. And being able to perform automation on so many different platforms allows iShare to be an IT department's single pane of glass for managing all enterprise automation. Okay, reason number three is iShare's ease of use. Uh, iShare is so easy to use that it requires no programming, no scripting, and no coding skills of any kind, as you're undemonstrated. And uh, building sophisticated workflow automations takes nothing more than dragging and dropping objects on the drawing board, like you're creating a workflow chart in Visio. It's just that simple. Reason number four is the large amount of Lego-like content available out of the box. Uh, with iShare, as you saw, you get over 500 activities to build just about any workflow imaginable, and over 120 pre-built workflows, which we actually didn't show you, uh, to help you hit the ground running with processes that have already been automated. And a fun fact about those uh, workflow templates, uh, most of them came from our clients who designed, debugged, uh, streamlined and uh, tested those workflows in very complex, large real-world environments, and they were very uh, gracious then to allow us to use those processes by turning them into templates and including them with the base product. So uh, a lot of uh, uh, breadth of out-of-the-box content with iShare, and building and modifying the workflows is as easy as playing with LEGO building blocks. And I'm going to pause one more time because we have uh, another question uh, for your own. Is integration with LandDesk on the roadmap? 
Yes, that's part of the roadmap. Okay, so we will have an integration with Landesk uh, coming and, uh, down the road. Sorry, guy. By the way, um, you can already start using the product with Landesk uh, because it provides some APIs, and we can help you to uh, whoever asks the question. We can help you right now start using Azure with Landesk. But uh, in a couple of months, we're going to have an out of the box integration. Okay. Okay, and the uh, the fifth and final reason why uh, IT process automation goes beyond VM provisioning is that iShare focuses on providing you with a quick return on investment. And earning a fast ROI with iShare is a major product objective of ours. And we've seen numerous examples of customers who earn back their investment on uh, IT process automation after automating just one process. Okay, uh, as a next step, I strongly encourage everyone who sat through today's webinar to visit our website and download your own free 30-day trial copy of iShare. It's available from the download menu at iyahoo.com, and it's a full-featured version of iShare that has all the functionality we demonstrated for you today. And if you need any technical assistance with iShare while you're testing it out, we provide that assistance free of charge during your evaluation period. So the software and the support are risk-free uh, during the trial period, so don't delay. Start automating beyond VM provisioning today. And that concludes our webinar, everyone. Um, thank you all for attending. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have one more question. Uh, do we have integration with Service Desk Plus Manage Engine software you're on? Um, actually, that's uh, uh, one that we already started working on. So I guess by the end of the next month, that's going to be ready. Okay, so by the end of October, Service Desk uh, integration will be available. Yep, okay, that agenda. concludes our webinar, everyone. Thank you all for attending. If you think of anything else that you would like to ask, my email address is very easy to remember, and it's on your screen. And uh, our website is easy to remember as well. And um, that will do it. Have a great rest of the day, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all at our next webinar.